All right, all right, all right. Welcome to Sideboard MTG. My name's Eric, and it's time for another episode of Let's Play MTG. Today we've got red-green monsters, and not just any version, the version that won GP Memphis. I know a lot of you, if you've been looking into the red-green monsters deck, you've seen a lot of different versions, Jun monsters, some with Scrap Heap Scrounger and stuff. But uh, today I'm bringing you the, the one that won GP Memphis. So far, this is the, the best showing of the deck and it should be a lot of fun for us to play we're gonna we're gonna play uh, three games of it and hopefully everything will uh, will go well I would like to like to win these in the you know in the competitive queues there other than that though if you do like today's show then give it a thumbs up and if you like the content in general as always hit that subscribe button right down there in the corner all right guys so uh, I guess we should talk about the land base first there's a couple hash up oasis in the deck other than that, it's just, you know, split, four sheltering thicket, and four, uh, four root-bound crag. Everything else is uh, basics, so, you know, nice, uh, smooth land base here. Now, it is looking for double green and double red. It's got eight mountains in the deck, and uh, I believe that, what is it, seven, uh, seven forests. So, 25 lands here. It is split a little bit. Not a lot of other things in the land base. Like, you, we won't find any graveyard hate in the land base. We won't find you know uh, ways to destroy their lands like the field of ruin or anything but we do uh, we do have ways to deal with those type of things a little bit further in the deck we will talk about those when we get to them magma spray here three copies main board very important card for this deck now because it's magma spray a lot of times you're not going to be the person who's actually trying to save your own creatures from you know like a um, Veroska's contempt or something and speaking of Veroska's contempt very few decks can actually push or tax your opponent's number of Veroska's Contempts like this deck. And uh, again, we'll talk about that as we get a little higher in the mana curve here. And I'm sure you can already see a few of those spells. Now, four copies of a Braid. I I, uh, I really like a Braid. Personally, I, I think that some copies of Brontodon could have possibly take in the spot of a Braid. But that, that instant speed uh, way to uh, deal three damage is kind of what it's looking for. And more times than not, when I was in testing... I actually used the uh, the lightning strike feature where you would just burn something for three. So maybe uh, maybe Brontodon would was not the the call there. And I did say that in the earlier uh, iterations of these decks and stuff that maybe Brontodon should be it. And um, it looks like a braid is the all-purpose kill spell that these decks kind of needed. Now here's where this deck gets a little bit funny versus some of the other decks. This one runs four copies of Earthshaker Kenra and three copies of Resilient Kenra. Now, Resilient Kenra enters the battlefield and target creature gets a buff uh, where it's, it's plus X plus X, where X is Kenra's power. So when Kenra comes back from the graveyard for six mana, same price as the uh, Earthshaker Kenra, only in green, when it comes back from the graveyard, Resilient Kenra will give something plus four plus four. Now, Earthshaker Kenra, a lot of us know how that works, especially if you've ever fought Red Deck. Excuse me. Uh, especially if you've ever fought Red Deck, but Earthshaker Kenra is just a, you know, another good recursion. A lot of times on turn five and turn, or on turn six, this deck is looking to to bring back a, uh, a Kenra that you had to deal with early in the game. Now, on turn Three, we've got a lot of options here. Uh, one P in the LAR really helps you kind of go wide, get, gives you that extra blocker, uh, gives you a little something to do in the late game with that um, with that Thopter if you've got a lot of mana. I really like the, the P in the LAR. Also, you know, you might get into a point, uh, I actually got into a point where I was pumping the Thopter with the Ronus just to get the extra damage over the top without uh, worrying about a, a, a block. Even though it does give trample, it, we were, I was still just not wanting the uh, the opponent to lose his creatures. So uh, that was, that actually became relevant for the opponent to not be able to block, and no longer had my Pia, so I couldn't do that. Either way, um, <laughs> J Light Ranger here kind of surprises me. I felt that I drew a ton of lands with this deck, but again, I would always rather have the lands in my hand to play the spells that I have rather than just not. Um, you know, have those lands. So I will say that because of the four Merfolk Branch Walkers and the four Jade Light Rangers, that this deck feels like it floods on you every single game. But you do have to kind of draw back on that and go, 
I am casting spells every game. So uh, with this deck, you will normally just have a ton of land in the hand. And I, I just kind of finally got to the point where I... I just accepted that that was going to be the case, and uh, it also gave me the confidence to keep, you know, a two-lander if I was going to be able to, you know, cast my, my Merfolk Branch Walker, especially if I already had my, my red mana for some of my other spells and stuff, such, but uh, Jade, Jade Light Ranger is slowly starting to win me over, especially now that I'm, I'm really starting to realize that it just, just hold the land, just hold the land. Now... Rekindling Phoenix, uh, you can normally, it, this is one of the easiest two for ones to get in, uh, in standard in my opinion. Um, almost always you will either get a Veroska's Contempt or you will get a two for one. So uh, it, it puts your, your opponent on having to, you know, swing in, kill it in combat, then kill the token or spend two, two spells killing the token. Either way, you normally uh, get away with, uh, with something right there. Rekindling Phoenix, a absolutely terrific card as far as if you can't, if they can't deal with the Phoenix, then at that point they're going to start taking four in the air, and you can follow that up with your Glory Bringers, and there's four Glory Bringers in the deck, following that up with Glory Bringers, and then possibly on turn six bringing back a Resilient Kenra or something of that nature, gets completely, completely out of hand, and, um, you know, you're... Your glory bringer swinging over for eight, a, a phoenix swinging over for eight. That's a lot of damage coming really quick. Now, a card that I do have to talk about in the in the deck here is the main board two copies of Struggle to Survive. Now, this is your answer for those the Scarab God decks. Uh, it gives you the ability on turn five to struggle the Scarab God and then just pay that additional mana to go ahead and shuffle it back into its owner's library. Uh, you're going to shuffle your cards back in as well, so uh, it does kind of work against your, your Kenra efforts, but another thing with Jade Light Ranger, if you are going through the different modes of Jade Light Ranger and you see a Kenra, you can always easily just pitch that into the graveyard without a, without a worry there. So that is, uh, that is the main board. Let's talk about the sideboard a little bit. We've got a couple Chandras, another copy of Magma Spur, rounding out that play set. Uh, just, again, hedging against uh, Mardu vehicles and, you know, the Mira, of course. Chandra's defeat, just all of those, um, uh, all the, the decks that are basically running, um, you know, the Phoenix and Glory Bringers and stuff, Chandra's defeat is absolutely terrific. It also kills... Maverick Thopterist and uh, Whirler Virtuoso. Just uh, just pointing that out because, you know, it is good against those Grixis decks. And most of them will, will at least have Glorybringer or, you know, a copy of um, of the Phoenix or at least some Whirler Virtuosos. And this this is a one-mana way to, to deal with that at instant speed. Instant speed being uh, nice for the trigger being on the stack so they don't get to make a Thopter. All right, um, next we have Blossoming Defense. I find that Blossoming Defense is extremely, uh, extremely useful in this deck when you're planning on them having to two-for-one your Phoenixes. With, if you're coming up against a deck that you expect to have to two-for-one your Phoenixes, then you bring in your Blossoming Defense, and it's just really good for, uh, you know, the Phoenix to, to die, them to go to target the token, and then you give the token... Um, and our hexproof, they can't kill it. You get your phoenix back anyway, and they lost the spell. Now that is that's only keeping you at a two for one because of the blossoming defense. But as soon as your phoenix comes back, if they needed you know that turn only to get away with you know killing that phoenix, as soon as your phoenix comes back, now they're back onto the point of it getting to two for one yet again. And uh, if they had to go that route to deal with it the first time, they're not going to have the spells to deal with it the second time. We've got a, a naturalize here, a couple Azkanta archers. Now, a lot of people ask, you know, different questions about why would this deck, this card be in here? And yes, it does fight with things. It can fight with uh, opposing Phoenix tokens. Uh, it can block Phoenixes. Uh, but if you pair it with a Magma Spray, you can actually kill a Phoenix. Now, would I bring it in against, um, you know, the... Grixis decks only if I thought that they were on, you know, they had Whirler Virtuosos or if I thought that there were some Thopters. This is really good against Thopters as you'll play it, you'll kill the Thopter, 
and then uh, if it fights with the Whirler Virtuoso, a lot of times you'll have the mana to follow that up with the Magma Spray, and you'll just be done with the uh, Whirler Virtuoso. Again, uh, this um, this creature with the trigger on the stack, if you pull this late, you can actually um, you know buff it um, with a Ronus trigger or something like that. So there there are other you know, interesting little lines of play that you can get get away with this. So once you actually get into the deck, it just kind of feels good when it comes down. Hard to explain, but anything that might have Thopters, you might want to bring in your your Archer here. At least, uh, you know, the Thopters do get shot down, if you will. All right, uh, next here we got a couple Death Gorge Scavengers. Pretty much the same thing. Uh, if, if it's uh, if it's flying, you know, you bring in the the archers. If it's in the graveyard, then uh, and you're worried about it there, then you're probably going to want your scavengers to to, to kind of scavenge that graveyard and take care of that for you. No, nope. it does uh, it does need to be mentioned that this is a a good source of um, life gain if you need to gain a couple points of life. I actually really like this against red decks, especially to eat opposing Kenras. So uh, you know the, the the life gain is nothing to uh, snub at. This is a, a really really good source of life gain. And against those the Scarab God decks, you can kill the Scarab God and then just simply play your Death Gorge Scavenger so you don't have to shuffle your library back in. So there, there's other other little interactions there. Now, uh, I do want to say that Magma Spray paired with uh, Chandra Torture Defiance's Neg ability uh, will kill the Scarab God uh, and be done with it. And you do still get to keep a little something left over. Um, also, there's a couple copies of Carnage Tyrant for those uh, tokens decks, you know, the decks that might put up a bunch of small blockers. Uh, Thrashing Brontodon, uh, another good way to deal with en uh, enchantments and artifacts. Uh, a Braid won't actually deal with the artifacts, but it'll deal with the enchantments. And then, of course, another uh, answer for the Scarab God. So that's the deck. We're going to jump into some gameplay and hope you guys enjoy. Oh, no. Well, looks like we're, uh, we're going to play a, a regular game here before we actually get into the queues. I... It'll give us a good start here. Can we make that look better? No. Maybe? Yeah, we'll go with that. Alright, we're on the play. Oh, that's horrible. Okay, so we've got... Land, Magma Spray, Glorybringer, Kenra. Right, we'll keep. You know what? We do not need this. Nor this. Nor that. Alright, so let's play some MTG. Uh, we're just going to start out with the, the forest here. That'll allow us to bring in our rootbound crag untapped. And um, next turn we'll just play Kenra. It's kind of horrible to just drop Kenra, but that's kind of okay. Of course, he has to target himself, as it's the only valid target. And sure, we'll use its ability. It's a 4 4. Alright, the opponent's got a field of ruin and a desert. Hmm. Let's, uh, let's get in for a little bit of damage. I think we can get this Ronus down. I'm gonna try it. I'm gonna try it. Ooh, Ronus. Okay, opponent. Got a green source. All right. Arcane Adaptation. So everything he controls is going to be a Sphinx. Say it. Space. It's a dinosaur. All things are dinosaurs. Okay. I am interested in this combo. So, 
So we're just gonna pump the Kenra. Enter combat. And put the opponent on a two turn clock as is. So turn two Kenra, turn three Ronus. Turn four just pump Ronus. Dinosaur spells you cost cast. Cost two less to cast. Okay. So one, two, three, four, five, six. Uh, yep. You're a dead glory bringer, fella. Well, we'll jump into the next game here. Um, willing to bet that those magma sprays may not do me much good here. Um, I'm gonna bring in the brashing, or I'm gonna bring in brash, and I'll leave one magma spray. Maybe it should have been a Chandra. Maybe no, too late. Too late. All right, here we go. All right, well, a little bit of a painful mana base, but uh, I'll keep it. Okay, well, we uh, have a decent attack here on two. Should be able to make something un like not be able to block. Yeah. <laughs> Drover. Well, he definitely has the dorks. I want to know what he's trying to cast because with the uh, making things that are not a dinosaur a dinosaur so that you can cast them seems very very interesting to me. <clears throat> so I want to know what he's trying to trying to cast or what he's trying to turn into a dinosaur to make it cheaper. Which makes me think that without the the adaptation He's not going to have good dinosaurs to cast. But that would just be bad deck building, right? No way our opponent would do that. So many lands. Branch Walker. We're going to... I'm just going to go ahead and put it in the grave. And we drew the land. Well, we will not be attacking. So, in hindsight, but you never know that. Shouldn't have uh, pitched the branch walker until the second. Uh, the second explorer. Wow. The explore mechanic. Crazy. Okay. All things are dinosaurs and they cost three less to cast. So. Treasure map. Brontodon off the top. Brontodon off the top. A braid. Might be useful. That might be useful. Okay. Let's go ahead and attack.
Sweet. All right, so we'll kill this thing. We'll play a land cycle. So that made it, like, if he couldn't cast it last turn, then he shouldn't be able to cast it this turn, if he's even holding it. But these are dinosaurs now, so all of his drovers cost less. Oh, and drovers are just instantly 3-3s. Three hmm. Because you control a dinosaur. <laughs> That's funny. It's a human cleric dinosaur. Right. So let's play. Let's play a Pia. And I'm gonna swing. Something tells me he'll just take it. Ooh, we killed it. Good. All right. Perfect. And this time we will. We will go ahead and cycle. Um. He's cycling, so he's digging as well. Maybe seen something on top that he liked. Went ahead and pulled it. And we'll cycle. what he's waiting on here. Oh, we got an abrade. Good timing on the abrade. Let's go ahead and destroy target artifact. Okay, um, I think I'm just going to hang on to my struggle to survive. And I uh, will just, I'm just going to buff it and hit him for two. It's a it's a decent little clock. I could have held up the struggle there. It is instant speed. Galta. 
That's a real dinosaur. Well, we can kill it. That's a plus. That is a, that's a big plus that we can kill kill Galta. Um, it's going to cost us everything, though. Okay. Chip in for one and pass the turn. Whew, Galta. I don't know what we do with another Galta. He just slams another one where Probably going to be in a little trouble here. A little bit of trouble. There's another Galta. Yep. Yep, that's a problem. That is a problem. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. If we can end this in the air or not but I am sure going to try so next turn the plan is to bring back this Kenra man looking a little bleak we're at 20 though All right, so we stop two of it and take 10, which means we have to stop a minimum of four of Galta next turn, plus other things. All right, so there's a land. And we go It's just not enough. Just not enough. Noble effort, but just not enough. We we missed it by missed it by four points of damage. Unfortunate. I'm not gonna just say it's over, but it's pretty close. I assume he turns everything sideways here. Right. Yeah. Okay. I had to at least see if he um, he would attack with the Galta or not. Okay, so how do we beat a Galta? We don't. We outrun Galta. We get in the air. Um, killing Drovers is decent. 
uh, this naturalize is great. Yep. <clears throat> Maybe the other struggle, but I think we're just going to run it like this. Oh, man. Okay, well, that'll help somewhat. I think we can run it like this. Hopefully, we'll hit land. All right, well, I'm just going to play a land past the turn. And then, let's see. We got nat naturalized and a braid up for next turn. I don't think we're going to need those this early, but we'll see. There's another land. We do have to worry about him censoring Ronus. Hopefully he'll, he'll go for stuff here. I will just abrade it now. As that's probably one of our better abrade targets. And we get to hit Ronus here. Which is kind of hard to remove. And then next turn, if we can, if we can, Jade Light. He'll definitely want to keep up counter this this turn. But we do get to play around Sensor, which is great. He actually made us cast the sensor. Or pay for the sensor. Wow. Wow. Alright. Okay. Okay. Maybe he tries to remove J Light Ranger here. Drover. Drover, Drover, send her over. All right, well, since he's only got colorless mana, I definitely think we're just going to, to crash in here. Man, Ronus. Ronus just doing the good dragon's work. Yep, that's going to it's gonna be too much for you to handle there, opponent. All right, wow. Awesome, awesome. Uh, let's uh, let's get over and do some cues, and looks like we got an opponent waiting. Ah, oh, missed him, missed him. <clears throat> Personally, I, I actually I really like this deck. I the deck is uh, it's a ton of fun, and the uh, the Kenras are just they're great. Uh, bringing them back in this in the late game, so. Okay, we won the dice roll. We got some sprays, a braid, got a turn two, got three land. Let's do this. Just start out with my tap land. I know we could keep up the the spray, but against most decks, it's just not necessarily a series on turn one. Looks like we'll we'll try to to get aggro here. Definitely gonna. Oh yeah, we're just gonna leave that on top. If it, if it was a Kenra, I would have pitched it. In this matchup, I expect Kenra to um, let's go ahead and get him for three here. Uh, I assume we get censored. But he knows about it, so let's play it. Okay. I mean, I'm okay with that. We already have our next land, so 
If we get another land, that'll be fine. If we don't, then, you know, that's fine as well. Kenra will be great, but we looks like we're going to just be able to spray everything. So, let's get in for, for five and see if we can just close this game out. And that's one of the things I like about this deck is uh, in certain, you can, there's certain lines that you'll get to draw that, oh man, you'll just get to, to close games out so fast. Alright, so here I expect him to cycle, make a Drake. Oh, he's even going to gain some life. Alright, so we're just going to deal with that, keep punching. And, I mean, he's going to have to keep making drakes. Uh, the beautiful part is, like, this deck does get down a little bit of an early threat. And then that early threat can really take off. This is this is one of the cases where Merfolk Branchwalker just really, really shines. So he's cycling. He's going to make a Drake. And we'll put him at four. I would play this, but he might have a Fumigate, so I'm going to hold up. <clears throat> At least I'll be able to follow up with a creature. Yep, there's the Fumigate. Um, at least I can cast that one next turn, but if we put it into the grave, I'll put it in the grave. Maybe that's a little risky, but I'll put it in the grave. We do have him at two turns right here. Okay. He's using mana. Let's just swing. He has to answer this. And if settles is only answer, then he has to settle. Can you do it again, opponent? Cycling a cast out. We shoot another. And then we'll pass the turn. So the opponent gets to flip things. He gets to do all kinds of things. However, everything we do is lethal. That's pretty cool. Like, that's pretty cool that, like, all of our spells are lethal. And we've got two Kenras in the graveyard, so I don't know if that was the exact right way to go with that, but I, I think it was effective. 
Ooh, no ways to deal with the Kenras. Scooped it up. Man, isn't that great? Uh, well, we definitely bring in our, our Bronzodons here. And Magma Spray is so good here. I'm going to take out uh, two of the Abrades. I don't know. The Abrade was... Maybe we shouldn't take out the Abrade. Pia is not going to be really great in this matchup. And then... Jade Light's going to be okay. Resilient Kenra is going to be all right. Man, the Merfolk Branch Walker was just getting under everything. Glorybringer is good. Um, but I don't want to get, like, I don't want to draw him before turn five. Like, I want all action. I want to be early. So I'm just going to, um, just going to cut the curve down a little bit here. Ooh, wow. That's, uh, that's bad. That's bad. I'm going to mulligan. Ouch. That's bad, too. Keeping. Yep, put it on top. What, I had a scry and a draw. What? I had a scry and a draw and two Merfolk Branch Walkers, guys. Come on. You know you would have kept that. We won game one. We got this. Maybe. I don't know. We'll find out. All right, so we're playing this so we can be untapped on turn two. Um, hopefully, we'll just draw action or land and then we'll draw uh, action off the branch walker hey look that's action that is total action you want to stop the branch walker huh walker of the branch Ooh, cycling he's cycling what do we get land I'll take it no problems no qualms man just all the action um I mean, how dangerous is the Brontodon? How dangerous is the Brontodon? Maybe it's Ronus? I mean, if he didn't have a... Maybe it is Ronus. I know next turn we have to play the Branch Walker if we didn't get anything. Countervailing wins. Oh, you got us, opponent. And we only get to ping you for two. Mountain off top, mountain off top. Come on, mountain, 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 mountain. Oh, pooey. That's close enough to a mountain for me. No, it's not. Well, fine. We... This branch walker. Wow, spend them opponent. I love it. I love it. I love it. Okay. He's actually spending his spells, which is great. We're going to play the Phoenix here. Got a way to stop that opponent. Wow, just all the countervailing wins. Okay. I mean, opponent's down to, to two cards. He's not gaining life because he's actually stopping the creatures from entering the battlefield. Um, five cards in the grave. Ooh, another, another authority. Okay. One card for the opponent. Okay, so... He's going to gain some life here. I'm going to lose some life here. And, I mean, 
mean, if he gets uh, Drake Haven, we can pop it. All right, so he's got settle mana. Is he just going to take the damage? I think so. I don't believe we actually have to um, put this glory bringer into combat right now. So I'm going to go ahead and I'm just going to sack this desert and see if I can put close to lethal on him. If he's got the settle, he'll definitely need to, to use that here. Do we want the extra land? Maybe, maybe not. Probably not. Probably. Let's get rid of the extra life gain. I'll get a forest. It, the amount of life we have, I, I just, it didn't really, really bother me that we didn't have the, um, the mana. What does he got? Uh, an immortal sun. Awesome. That's cool. One, two, three, four, five. Trigger on the stack. Here we go, opponent. You have to top deck the, the answers for for old glory. He's a coming. Just a swinging out. Just me and old glory getting her done. I love it. I love it. All right, so we've got lethal next turn by sacking the uh, Haship Oasis here. He played land. It's going to be game. All right. Glory bringer getting it done. That's what I'm talking about. You guys like that? I mean, this deck is super sweet. Let's jump into one more game here. And, uh,. Hopefully, hopefully we'll get another win. I'm, I'm excited. Man, this deck is super sweet. Oh, man, I'm not supposed to be singing. We're not live streaming, but I'm not supposed to be singing. Well, the reason I don't sing, for those of you that, that might be wondering, is because the goal is to add people to the community, not drive them away. Um, and, you know, I only get the rhythm when uh, when I get, a, get the blues, you know. Some of you will get that. I don't even know if I get it. All right, well, <clears throat> good luck. Have fun, opponent. Um, looks like a keeper. Don't have a lot to do in the early game, but I mean it's just decent spells. Yeah, I mean now things are looking much better. We're definitely going to get that green source down. I would like to see a green source here soon, uh, but uh, Branch Walker wouldn't be bad either. I really like having a powerful two drop. I don't know if Branch Walker is really a powerful two drop. Sometimes it is, sometimes it isn't. Uh, but, you know, like here it may or may not be a powerful two drop. It may just be a two one. And we may end up with our third land or our fourth land, which we did. And now we have a two one. 
Um, so, I, you know, next turn we're looking at P and LR and see what the opponent has. Moment of craving. Okay. So he had an answer for it either way. So this is blue black control. Well, Pia is a good card to cast. Ooh, never mind. We will Jade Light Ranger. <clears throat> when uh, when he still has plenty of cards in hand, I'd rather him, you know, take the one for one here. He might respond to it immediately. And I will put this into the grave. Okay, so we got a land and a graveyard hit there. That's a really good graveyard hit. It's going to be hard for him to interact with it, so... All right. I mean, he's gaining life here. Blue-black control. Definitely got the tools to gain life now. Um, do we play around sensor? Sure. So the Magma Spray should be good for the Scarab God. The Abrade will be good for the Gear Hulk. And pretty much everything else, we just got to kind of chip through there. Glimmer. Oh, Hyro. We've got, a, we've got a good player here, a good smart player. He's got a well-tuned deck, though, to, to see the Moment of Cravings and the um, Essence Extraction. It's a, that's a well-tuned deck. Especially after what happened in Memphis last week with people running this deck and stuff just like I am today. Um, you know, this is, a, this is pretty good. Um, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to attempt to, to just slam Glorybringer here and see what happens. I mean, if he's got the counter spell, he's definitely going to use it here. And disallow. And disallow. All right, well, we will get to start pushing some damage now. Got a fatal push opponent? He does. He's got that fatal push. Just didn't want to deal with that Thopter anymore. All right, opponent. Not real happy about it. But you got it. Okay, so... Alright. We'll see if he can kill her. Go, go, Gadget, PNLR. Um, I mean, eh, it was a pump spell. We got it in while we still had a creature. I think against a lot of these blue-black decks, you're going to have to kind of get those hits when you can. What is he? What is he? He doesn't want to pitch it. Oh, he did pitch it. It was a fatal push. Cycle Hyro. Mainboard Psycho Hyro, he's looking for that land. He got it. He got it. Alright, so we cycle Shelter Thicket to get a rootbound Crag. Play a rootbound Crag. Mainboard Cycle. The opponent can do it, we can do it. Come on, action. That's not action. It's anti-action, though. Some good anti-action. The opponent will get to a threat eventually. Well, fine, opponent. Fine. Be that way.
Blue black control. They're just not letting us have any fun. I want to have more fun than this. I'm just going to pass. I'm going to pass because I can't beat the gear hole. And I want to be able to beat the gear hole. Simple as that. I want to be able to beat the gear hole. And next turn, I can. Probably not. He'll just bring back the fatal push. Or draw cards. There's a Jade Light. Let's play Jade Light. Pass the turn. That's Kanta getting it done. There's a Glimmer. So we know he wants to Glimmer now. Even though he's got seven cards in hand. People just want to Glimmer. I don't know why. Don't know why. Drawing cards. Is it really, really that good? Huh? Huh? I love to draw cards. Drawing cards is awesome. So you disallow it, or Gear Hulk disallow, or let it hit, and then Gear Hulk kill it. Uh oh, what is he doing? It's a lot of mana. Okay. Picked hieroglyphic illumination. Hieroglyphic illumination. All right, whatever. I'm gonna let him, you know, get his two cards here before I let him realize killing your gear hulk. Hulk down. Punch. Punch him. Smash him. Um, I would love, like, start to start getting, like, Kenras and stuff off the top. Like, just some gas. Gas off the top would be great. I mean, he's got eight cards in hand. If he can't deal with a 4-4, then, you know, he's got problems. Uh, I mean, Fatal Push it. He already used a couple Fatal Push, though. Eight cards in hand. So, a good grip. While he's discarding. He discarded a moment of Craven. Come on, let me dump a Kenra in the grave. Come on, show me a Kenra. Show me a Kenra. That was a land. Merfolk Branch Walker, what are you talking about? Like, come on. Snap into it. Snap into a Slim Jim. Ah, oh, sweet. Veraska's contempt just to deal with that. He didn't put much of a threat on them initially. That's what it was. Yep. Yep. Ooh. Alright. Impulse. He's a digging. Well, we've got nothing worth, uh, you know, worrying about in the grave. I would hate to have to spend three cards to kill the Scarab God, though, if that comes down, but... Um, it could definitely come down. 
Resilient Kenra. This part's pretty cool, so if he doesn't counter it, this will swing and hit him for four. Or unless he like punches like he could he could get rid of this. We're gonna try it though. He's going to contempt it. Okay. Um, alright. Uh, not a lot that I can really say about that. Just Roscoe's contempt just hitting and hitting hard. Okay, well. Oh, well, that's right. We won that match. That was a good match. Do we have any... Do we even have a Haship Oasis left? We do. We have one left. Ah, but that's not it. So, I assume if he snap, like if he snaps back into this with a Gear Hulk, then he's getting nothing less than a Baroska's Contempt. Nope. Just casting the Baroska's Contempt. Just straight casting it. Well, all right then, opponent. The Scarab God. That's going to um, possibly do it for us, but we got outs. We got outs. We got outs. We got outs. Oh no. He counters our the scarab god. It can't be. He, he, he countered our out. Alright, so now he just starts bringing back like lore bringers and stuff, and uh, we're dead. I scoop it. I scoop to the, to the negate. Okay. So we know we want this. We know we want this. That would have been so awesome. Magma Spray is not going to be that great. PNLR is kind of good, but not exactly what we're looking for. The defense is going to be great. Uh, Death Gorge. I think I do. Uh, definitely got to tax those Baraska's Contempts. I don't think I need so many Earthshaker Kenras, because I don't think he's going to have that many blockers. But I do like having the extra haste body. Um... Cut one of Braid. I am trying to be aggro here. Maybe I should cut two of Braid and stay as aggro as possible. Can we cut all their Braid? We're just going. Hardcore. Like we don't care. Do it. Do what you do what you will. Here we come. Um Wow, that's that's brutal. I'll keep though. If we land the the Chandra, then we're we're gold. Um, all right, so sheltered thicket probably should have like just saved that to cycle on, on three or on two, but I'm gonna I'm gonna go ahead and pitch it. Yeah, we could have cycled it right here and been one card deeper, and still would have had both of our colors. We didn't pay for double green though. Oh wow. May. No, we can just kill it here. Yeah, we'll just kill it. And then next turn, try to get down to Chandra. Like, maybe he's wanting to be the aggressor here? Look, yeah. What are you going for, opponent? What are you pulling out of my deck? 
Struggle to survive. Carnage Tyrant. Well, you got him. There's two. Go get them. You wouldn't say that in real life. You wouldn't tell your opponent how many there are. If they fail to get them, it's on them. Totally on them. It's, it's dirty, but, you know. Play to win, right? Clock people. It's so mean. We got him by four minutes. Take a screenshot. Let's go. Well, we're tapped down. So you do do what you do, opponent. Take two. Forest enters graveyard or enters uh, exile zone. Got our carnage tyrants. Hard for his deck to deal with carnage tyrants. So if he doesn't bring in the lost legacy to deal with them, then uh, he's definitely going to have a rough day. I'm going to make some mana here just so I have a little extra so I can get a couple things done, you know. Got another. All right. Well, maybe he has a Varaska's Contempt. He knows we have the Blossoming Defense. He needs to do it while we're tapped down. But, um, yeah. Definitely needs to, to Varaska's Contempt this. Huh? Huh? What well, do you got, opponent? Contempt on the Chandra. Okay. So, Earthshaker's really good here. Green. We will pump. And... Hit you for nine, opponent. That's pretty decent. That's pretty decent right there. That's a good, that's a good healthy punch. Just a, just a nice punch. Glint sleeve siphoner. That works for me. Any, any good two drop off the top would be nice. That's kind of okay too. So let's say we just we just want to swing, right? Here we go. What do you got, opponent? He's got trample. I'm gonna do it. So that puts the opponent at one. At one. Oh goodness. What do you got, opponent? Land and Gear Hulk's pretty decent. Supreme Will, he's digging. Ronus getting the job done, guys. Come on, Ronus, get us to game three. You can do it, buddy. You can do it. Uh, let's go green, green. 
We're taking the gamble here. We're going to put it on top and then put it in the graveyard. Pay one. Yeah. Bam. Get into the next game. Okay. Um, let's take this. Naturalize. These Brontodons. And say... Yeah, you might want to get rid of the the Carnage Tyrants, but there might be other things you need to get rid of too, sir. Chandra was really good right there. She gave us enough power to just kind of take off. And now I'm going to like take her out, which is funny. I'm going to leave the Carnage Tyrants in. He has to pull the answer to those. Like they, if it, if it lands, then he's he, he's just in trouble. So, not taking the Carnage Tyrants out. Maybe I shouldn't take the Chandras out. Maybe it's Glorybringer, or maybe Jade Light or something. But I think I think I'm all right here. I do want to come back from being, you know, I want to start pushing and being the aggressor, even though that I'm on the draw. So, we're gonna see where it goes. Alright, so we get Kenra into Jade Light. Into Jade Light. <laughs> yeah. Well, I mean it's gonna it's gonna start out like it's gonna be nice. We'll see what uh what happens here. He'll probably gain two instead of taking two here. Maybe not. Okay. We can do this second main phase, so we'll go ahead and uh, attack, see if we can get a little damage in. And now we'll just attempt a Jade Light Ranger. Uh, the good part here is we're going to just continue to throw threats down, forcing him to answer them, which is great. And we're getting to like swing every turn as well, so... Uh, this is this is working out fairly well for us. Okay, gifted Aetherborn. Um, let's try Phoenixes. And we'll pass. So now I assume he Veroska's contempts the Phoenix. Um, if we draw a land, then we're going into the Glory Bringer. Okay. I'm just gonna take the hit. Let's see if Ivarasas contempts the uh, Phoenix. It's a fatal push. No contempt. Possibly a disallow. Um, let's say we want. I think we want to try another Phoenix here. Disallow. We're only netting two out of this so far. This will, will cause action, though. Um, good news is we're almost a Carnage Tyrant.
We get to go Glory Bringer this turn, which is awesome. Or we get to cast two spells this turn. Brontodon. Let's put Brontodon in the graveyard. And we'll put that on top. At least we're pushing damage this turn, but I actually expect him to uh, have that Roska's Contempt finally. No. Wow. All right. All right, opponent. So he's got uh, Essence Scatter, Fatal Push, and Disallow on the... And we got a Brontodon on top. No, we, we've got a Struggle to Survive on top. Yeah. Um, I'll block. So here we glory bringer. Swing eight. Um <clears throat> Yeah. I think that's the uh, the plan. Stop glory be. Uh, okay, well, scatter my glory. Crack you for four. Well, I mean, that's what we've got. This is what we've got. I do want to kill this thing. We've got other. Like we can kill this. Um, this thing is... Uh, I don't know. I mean... We just buy it a little bit of time. Okay, well... Yep. You got me again. Uh, land off the top wouldn't be bad. Because then we could do some stuff. We could do some stuff with a land off the top. Mainly swing eight. Like, that'd be the big thing that we could do with a land off the top is swing eight. Probably just do it here. It's resilient camera pump here swing doesn't give a trample though does it man it would it would work as a kill spell that way bam got it got it okay opponent Can't counter it. Not with two mana. Not with two mana. Yeah, we're gonna just put it in the air. Just gonna put her in the air. Put her in the air. Yep. We wanted to use that ability. Absolutely. Absolutely. Now, get her done. Get 
getting her done. All right, man, that's this deck is so sweet. Kenra and your kitty. Like, even got an eternalized cat for crying out loud. We know it's a cat because this was the cat beforehand. The Kenras and their cats. The jackals and their cats. Who knew jackals were cat people? Ooh, now he fires off the contempt. You waited that long to fire off contempt. Wow, opponent. Like, that wasn't even cute, opponent. Gee. Alright, well, I'm going to exile this Earthshaker Kenra. I'm going to bring Kenra back. I'm going to make this not be able to block. And I'm swinging with everything. So, unless he has Consign... Uh, or unsummon, unsummon. He's going to be in a little bit of trouble here. All right, guys. This is the first place deck from GP Memphis. I hope you guys had a lot of fun watching it. I know that I'm not as active when we're not live streaming, and I, I will try to you know, get something in the background or something that I can continue to talk, but I hope you guys do like, the, uh, like this content anyway. As always... If you want to support the channel, there's a lot of ways you can do that. You can uh, help support the channel uh, over on Patreon, or you can help support the channel right here on YouTube Gaming. And I will, as usual, be streaming later tonight at 5, and um, hopefully I'll get some practice, or if you want to give me some feedback, comments, or something on how I can make these pre-recorded uh, matches a little bit more entertaining to watch, uh, you know, um, you know, maybe actually, uh, you know, maybe it's something that I can personally do that to that will just be more entertaining but if you guys let me know I will I will see what I can do to make these a little bit nicer so that uh, you guys can you can watch these and, and make it through them other than that though my name's Eric you've been watching sideboard MTG I had a lot of fun I hope you guys had fun we'll see you next time